Well, people are asking where we're at. Okay. I believe we are live. Can anybody hear me? You can, uh... Okay. Let me know if anybody can hear us in track number three. I have yet to see anybody say uh, they can hear us. Yeah, they can. Okay. Yeah, see it. Yay. Sure. So I appreciate uh, your, your patience, but uh, welcome to AAC in the Cloud 2020. This particular um, session is, we changed the name to something cool. It's Don't Stop Believing, our journey through AAC. But it's still on the same sub subject. Um, Basically, it was our transition from choice based AAC to core vocabulary. Um, it's our personal experience with, with my son. Um, and I'm going to share this. And hopefully, a lot of the things, whether you are a new AAC um, user, family supporter, or somebody who's been AAC for a long time, um, a lot of the things that we went through you can help those that are just getting into AAC. So I am Scott Walquist. I have about 15 years in the tech and cloud industry um, experience. The last five years have been with CoughDrop. And um, I'm the son of a 15 year old autistic he is a AAC user, he does not speak. And um, a lot of the things that we're gonna be showing you is our experience with um, his core board and with cough drop, but it's still going to be useful for, for any app. Um, I'm also here with Sarah Cox. Hi, I'm Sarah. I'm a speech therapist in the schools. I've been working in the schools for, um, I think like 18 years. I've lost count. I'm just, <laughs> um, I've been serving on the Utah Speech and Language Hearing Association Executive Board for over 10 years and two of those I was the president. So I'm pretty proud of that. All you speeches out there get involved in our professional organization. Um, we need your help. And basically just, it's my passion to help kids communicate. And I feel lucky to have been able to work with Adam for these past three years and to share our journey with you. All right, to get the important stuff out of the way for Cough Drop and Cough Drop is the sponsor of AAC in the Cloud. Um, but I also am a parent of an AAC user and once again, this is our experience with him. And I'm employed by the Weber School District and have no affiliation with Cough Drop, Cough Drop besides just using it with Adam. And I'm doing this out of the kindness of my heart. All right. So I'm still seeing questions about uh, if, if they can see us and things. You guys can still see us, correct? We'll just keep talking to ourselves. We'll like keep talking and hopefully you're, you're all seeing this. Um, but I am going to... Very delay, very difficult to understand. Uh-oh. Uh, sorry, delay on our side. Okay. Some people can hear it. Okay. I'm going uh, to get rid of my picture and just show you the actual presentation now. All right. Yeah. So, all right. Learning outcomes. Sarah? Oh, that's me. <laughs> okay. So today we want to share Adam's journey with you and our learning outcomes for the session are that we want you to be able to identify why starting with a robust core vocabulary is typically better for the AAC user. We want you to be able to identify the key members of the AAC user's team and describe three ways to increase modeling for the AAC user. So hopefully you walk away being able to do those things. Uh, a good place for us to start is um, with a lot of the AAC myths and barriers that, that we hear. Uh, even I, as a parent of an AAC user, when we first got into it, we had a lot of these same issues. And I know that uh, a lot of, we aren't the only ones, um, as we talk with different AAC um, users and their supporters around the country, uh, we run into these same things. So the first myth that we hear a lot is, um, Introduce, introducing AAC is going gonna, is gonna to slow them down. It's going to make them not motivated. Or we'll hear them say, I want to see if they can talk first. And then if they can't, then maybe we'll look at AAC. 
or we don't want AAC to, we don't want them to use it as a crutch. And we've, research has shown that it does not use it, they do not use it as a crutch. In fact, if you've ever used crutches, it slows you down. If you can, if you can walk, if you've broken your leg, you can walk, um, you're going to get rid of that crutch very fast. And um, basically, this actually, research has shown this actually helps people with articulation and syntax and, and um, verbiage and things like that. So it's not going to slow them down at all, but can actually help them with learning to speak if they have that issue. Myth number two, young children are not ready for AAC and will not require AAC until they reach school age. And I think we all know that that's pretty silly because we wouldn't keep our um, children, our verbal children from speaking until they got to school. So let's give our kids that are nonverbal access to AAC so that they can communicate before they get to school. Um, and myth number three, and I'll put the slides in here. I see some people are having some issues with slides, so I'll put it in later in a bit. But myth number three that we hear a lot is that uh, you need some type of prerequisite. You have to hit these specific, um, you have to hit these specific consistent markers each time and we can't move on and, and tell them. And that's a, that's a major myth. You don't need to be able to show any type of prerequisite before starting with full, with full AAC, full robust um, vocabulary. All right. So you've all probably seen this graphic before. Um, actually made by Rachel Langley, one of the presenters here at the conference. But we just wanted to stick it in here in case one of you haven't because it's a super powerful one. Um, by 18 months, babies have heard 4,380 hours of spoken language and we don't expect them to be fluent speakers yet. If AAC learners only see symbols modeled for them twice weekly for 20 to 30 minutes with their speech path, it'll take 84 years for them to have the same exposure to aided language as an 18 month old has to spoken language. So there's no way we can expect our AAC users to be using the same level and complexity of utterances as their same aged peers right away. It'll take a lot of modeling to get them there. So start modeling as soon as possible and do it often. Um, I want to take a little bit through Adam's journey, through our journey, and a lot of the mistakes that we made, things that I wish we had known a lot earlier, and um, things that can help you um, hopefully take some years off of, of your AAC learning. Um, so when we first started with Adam and his diagnosis and, and not being able to speak and things, they said, well, we need to start him at the time, our, our district had some pretty archaic rules, and they said, we have to start them with, with PECs. He's got to be able to show that he can consistently choose these same things over and over again. And he was really bad at it. And um, a lot of that was he didn't want whatever was in the choices there. And so they kept him at PECs for more years than I really wish they would have. Uh, and we finally were able to say, maybe... Maybe if we go somewhere electronic, maybe that will help him out. And um, so they said, okay, let's do this. We'll, we'll move him to AAC. Let's start him with a really small board. And so let me show you what his boards look like when we first started. In fact, it was, um, it was basically just uh, yes. Yes. No. No. And I need help. They said, okay, once he gets really good at yes, no, and I need help, then we'll then we'll add some things. And then we added like his lunch. And it was really slow and it worked okay. And let me, let me preface this by saying any AAC is better than no AAC. So I'm not gonna discourage you in doing this, but by the time we were already to like sixth grade after all of the pecs and starting in yes, no, and a few choice boards. By the time we were in sixth grade, I was looking at his data and reports and every single day, his whole data was saying, Tito's, Tito's, Cheerios, Cheerios, please, yes, please, Tito's, Tito's, Cheerios, Cheerios. And he was in sixth grade. I mean, your average sixth grade is not, sixth grader is not gonna be saying, Tito's, Tito's, Tito's. I mean, I would personally, but uh, 
the average person, that's not what they're saying. And we didn't have a full vocabulary that we could give them. So we sat down and we, we made a plan. We said, you know what? We need to move him over to core vocabulary. And one of the biggest things that we didn't want to do was just completely start with core and get rid of what he already learned. So I just added another folder here that went to core and um, this is where we started. So even if you're gonna, if even if you're using a different app and you're moving them to core, I would recommend still having the old until you can transition them all the way to core because you don't want to shock them completely. Um, and so this is this is where we moved to was core vocabulary. And let me back up a little bit and talk about core vocabulary. Um, as we've looked at the different research out there. We wanted something that was a robust core vocabulary. What is robust a vocabulary in AAC? Basically, it has to have several of these things. Um, motor planning, you need to be able to, to know where these buttons are and, and get to them easily. Expandable vocabulary, um, you want to be able to put in whatever the actual AAC user is talking about. If they talk about superheroes all the time, even though that's not my vocabulary, that's their vocabulary. Make a superhero page one. Um, grammar, you know, you want to be able to expand the ing and the ed and things like that. We wanted something with an alphabet that he could spell if he needed to. And pre-programmed whole messages. Once an AAC learner gets good at saying, I want to go home, you don't need to do that all the time. You can put in a full, full message. Or if they, if you have a job and things, and you need to put in full messages that they can um, use, they don't want to have to hit the buttons over and over again. And then most importantly, core words, which if you've gone to any of the other sessions so far, core words is you know the same 250 to 300 words we say about 80% of the time. So we wanted to give him a, a, a very robust vocabulary, and. Um, one of the other things that you hear a lot of people just joining the, the AAC journey is um, they'll go in and they'll say, let's start them um, at this four button board. You know, and once they get good at four buttons, then we'll move them to the 24. And then once they get good at that, then we'll move them to the 60. But uh, that's really hard. Because once they learn where all of these buttons are in the 24, and then you say, okay, we're gonna move them to the 60, they have to learn that motor planning all over again. And the way I, I liken this when I'm talking to parents and teams is I liken it to my phone. Um, if you look at your phone, we start out with, um, or I'm sorry, Basically, we have all these symbols and they don't mean anything to, to most of us, but we learn over time that when I hit a certain symbol, it's gonna take me to a specific app. And it also teaches you, I learn, I know how to get to Facebook. and I know how to get to Instagram without even looking at it anymore. I've, mo I've memorized that motor plan. But have any of you ever had a phone where you've gotten everything memorized and then um, your phone resets or you get a new phone all the apps are still there, but you basically have to learn it all over again. I absolutely can't stand that. And for the next two weeks, I'll be like, oh, oh yeah, Facebook isn't there. I need to move. Um, it's the exact same way with an AAC learner. If you start them out at a 24 until they get really good at it and then move them to 60, you're, they're having to start all over again. Um, I hope that makes sense. So what we typically do instead of um, starting them with a smaller board and then moving them to the, to the 60 or the 112 is it's easier to start them on whatever size board they're going to be able to access. But um, instead, if this is too overwhelming for them, there are different tools and things that are built into to the different apps where you can mask or unmask or hide and unhide. Um, so <clears throat> for instance, in CoughDrop, we actually have a um, progressive language where you can go down in, in different levels. And we did a survey with the AAC SLP Facebook group and we just said, what words do you typically teach first and then what words? And yes, no, and more 
were the were the most the three most introduced words. And so, if you want to start them with less vocabulary, but don't want to mess up their motor planning, start them something like this. And then, as I go up to level two, done, stop, not, want, and go were the next one. Not is awesome because not actually doubles your vocabulary because you say I do not want to go, I not want to stop, things like that. But as you can see, as I'm going up in levels, it's not losing that motor planning where yes, done, and no are. So that's what we were most concerned with is once he learns where these specific words are, let's not, um, <clears throat> let's not make him learn them all over again. Let's make sure it's there. And so with most apps with a, a core robust vocabulary, either have levels that you can put in or masking and hiding um, and bringing them forward over time is a much better strategy than um, much better strategy than actually saying let's start them at 24 and then move them to 60. So I just want to say it's so cool that cough drop did all that work for us so that we can just move up the levels. Well we 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 relied on the AAC and the SLP Facebook group to <laughs> tell us the, where to start, but, um, but yeah. So we, we gave him the a core, we gave him the most robust vocabulary, the 112, um, but if a 60 is better, and that's where they're gonna end up, start them with the 60, things like that. Um, People other, are agreeing with you on the chat, so good job. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good, yay, <laughs> thanks, Sherry. Um, so, <laughs> As we started out, we would we would hide and mask some of these buttons during his sessions with the with the speech path, but then we'd bring him forward and have him have all of his buttons, and um, and we would we would start to model with him and we'd hit specific buttons, but then when he just had it on his own, um, we'd let him play around with it, and so. Here's, here's one of the sessions where he's just hitting buttons over and over again. And we're trying to occasionally say, yeah, this word means this, and this word means this. Um, but we don't want to stop that babbling. We want him to learn where messages are. And it gets really frustrating. But let, here's him Black first track. doing it. Let me, let me start this over. So he'd hit Black a button track. and stare at me. Electric. 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 Mm. And he'd do this over and over again. And I'm like, is he even learning anything? What's going on here? And But then we'd start to say, he hit other buttons and we'd use it in a sentence. That's weird. Huh? So he said, weird. And I said, that's weird. What's, what's, what's private, weird? Private. Do you see with your eyes? D. D. So I'm obviously a little behind there. But we're trying to, as he's hitting buttons over and over again, we're trying to um, use them in sentences and things. And... It was really rough because we still didn't know if he knew what was going on, but we still wanted to make sure we're modeling with him every day, letting him babble and have that full language. Um, once we got, once we got the, the boards picked out and we got the, um, started letting him babble and things, and we needed a full team built around, the, built around him. Um, Right. So once you have decided on what board you're going to use, the next thing you'll want to do is inform all of the stakeholders of the plan. Now, who should be on the team? Of course, the parents and family, the SLPs, teachers, OTs, PTs, paras, and there's one we left off. Anyone want to take a stab at who we left off on the chat? There's probably a few, but there's one major part of the team that's definitely... Yeah. Who do we leave off? Somebody answer us. There you go. Way to go, Rachel. The communicator. Good. Oh, we got a ton of women. Nice job, you guys. Yeah, the, it's really important that you include the communicator on the team. And maybe at first they won't be able to contribute a lot to the team because they don't have a way to communicate yet. But once they're able to communicate more, they'll become a bigger and bigger part of the team and maybe even be able to be programming their own pages. Yeah, I mentioned, you know, if they really like superheroes, put superheroes in there because they're talking about it all day. 
Um, here's a really cool slide or thing that uh, one of our users sent us. She's a SLP and her daughter is a part-time AAC user. She's six years old and she actually programs some of her own boards, um, which is really awesome. But what's even better is uh, she got so good at programming her own boards that the mom who's an SLP was having her create boards for, for her clients and things. So definitely keep the, the student as part of the AAC team. They're a major part. They're going to tell you what they like and what they don't like. And what works right. So it's important to share the data with the team. Cough drop, and we're going to keep talking about cough drop because that's what we use, but um, cough drop makes this super easy to do with their data and reports. You can see exactly which buttons the user has been pushing, and it even brings breaks it down into what type of vocabulary and how often they're using it. It was really fun to watch Adam's core vocabulary usage shoot up once we got the whole team modeling it. And it is very powerful when the team can see their hard work is paying off. If you aren't using cough drop, decide how you will take data to show progress and decide how you're going to share it with the team. So I love that the logs and messages were built right into CoughDrop. It made communicating with the whole team all at once very easy. I would just log in and post a message after every session. That way the entire team would know what I was working on with Adam that week and what they should be doing when they're working with him as well. This particular day started out very frustrating with Adam not wanting to do much, but ended up with him using a sentence that nobody had ever modeled for him before. He said, you class out. He told me to leave. He wanted me to leave because I was requir requiring him to do work before he got to eat lunch. You better believe that I left and let him eat his lunch because I wanted to show him how powerful communication was. I was so excited to share with the rest of the team. So if you aren't a cough drop user, be sure to set up a way to communicate with everyone and be consistent in using it. Yeah, I would uh, ab absolutely be emailing each other or, um, pulling up some of your own data and reports and sharing it with the whole team. And that includes the parent. Um, and I hear this a lot from, from my, my speech path is, well, I don't, sometimes I don't want the parent to know what I'm doing because I don't want them to get mad and stuff. But a parent's a major part of the team and they can actually help on their side and continue to do the things, um, the same things. And, and the way I liken it to them is when I was a kid, I used to uh, take piano lessons and I actually really hated piano. And so I would never practice. And the teacher thought I was really bad. And my parent thought the teacher was really bad. And it's because they weren't sending each other messages and keeping each other up to date on what was going on. And so um, I, and they didn't know I wasn't practicing. And so if you can actually set up some type of support and be able to say, this is when he's doing it, this is what he's doing then the teacher and the parent and the speech path are all on the same page. And um, we're expecting these AAC learners to basically be able to play Beethoven, whereas, you know, they're only using it once a week and can even do, you know, I could only do, um, you know, twinkle, twinkle, little star. I could never do Beethoven because I never practiced. And my, my team members communicated with each other. So communicate, communicate, model, model, model. Um, oops. The other thing that we did is we wanted to uh, model with them and, and bring in lessons, but we wanted to do it smart. We didn't want to, uh, I think when we first started, we we're just like, okay, this week we're talking about go and stop and here's where go is. And then every day we'd be like, where's go? But we didn't bring anything else into it. And, and so we did some research about just learning in general. And I don't know if you've ever heard about the forgetting curve, but basically the forgetting curve, and I have a whole bunch of data in here and things that, and links that you guys can follow with it. Um, it's fascinating, but the forgetting curve, basically 50% of what we learn in one day, we're gonna forget the next day. And then um, if, we don't, if we don't review it, we're gonna learn, we're gonna forget another 25% after a week. And then we've basically forgotten 95% um, <clears throat> after a month. So what we want to do is continue to model and, and bring in new words, but also spend some time uh, modeling some of the things that we've been learning in the past. 
And um, there's some, something called space learning, which basically said, if, if you teach them a lesson one day, and then you only spend like five minutes reviewing that word the next day, and then a week later spend another 10 minutes, um, that's much more effective than just cramming it all in one day and then moving on to the next word. So you don't have to spend that much time going over those same words, but uh, over time you actually will retain more um, if you can spend a quick two minutes um, the next day and then uh, two minutes a week later and then two minutes a month later on those words. So we tried to keep track of what words we were doing and make sure to bring them back into the vocabulary as we introduce new words. So um, as I mentioned, there's, there's fabulous research on this. And this was for college students and them cramming, but it actually works very well for the AAC learner as well. Continue to bring it in and also bring in new environments, new, new um, <coughs> lessons and things like that. Instead of just saying, tell me where Go is. Can you show me where Go is? We want to talk about, um, we want to bring in different lessons and environments. And so if, if you want to teach them where stop and go is, let's do more than just go means stop and go. Let's learn it, let's use it in sentences. Let's use it in activities. And um, these are some of my favorite sites that we use to be able to teach core words. And this is what we did with Adam is we would go to one of these sites and bring up certain lessons about that word that we were using. And um, Practical has really great lessons. Um, AC and Autism, AC Language Lab, and AssistiveWare. Um, I would highly recommend using all of this because we, we know if you've been to any of the other sessions, we need to model them. But we quickly run out of ideas. Here's some ideas for you. And then Core Workshop, that's the one that we put together. Um, it's a free, it's a free um, site that any of you guys can use as well. Um, this is what we mostly used with Adam. Great. So communication workshop is the one that we used in Adam's class for our word of the week lessons. It has everything you need right there, three different levels and tons of activities that you can leave with the teacher to do throughout the week. And you, if you have an activity that you love, you can submit it so that others can use it. And then if you're like me, it helps you remember where it is so you can stay organized. Um, Scott showing you now you can see that like for the word go you can do the word level or you and it has different ways of how we use go um and then you can move up to um sentences and they have stories and activities yeah we talked about bringing in that whole team um when we're reviewing it with them it doesn't necessarily be need to be the speech pathologist that's reviewing those words there's other people in the team so the word go say that again for the people in the back <laughs> sends that if the speech path is saying these are the words we're working on maybe the teacher can also do a lesson about go and 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 go means more than one thing it means when something's moving or then go crazy go get it and here's some words to model because that's the biggest problem that we have is getting the rest of that team involved so if we can give them some ideas go there go back go crazy once the kid gets good at two words go get it go over there go away please and full sentences. I want to go there for you, with you. Um, <clears throat> so feel free to use this and use the learning projects because the teacher can be like, this week we're learning about go. What are things that go? And they can ask the, ask the class, what are things that go? And um, the class, a car, a, a plane. And the teacher is up there with either their big board or their device saying, go, yeah, a, a car goes, right? Let's also get the the eight the OT involved. You know, play red light, green light. Play, you know, you can easily get stop and go. So as we're doing these spaced repetition, it doesn't necessarily need to be the speech path that's always doing this. Let's, you know, here's some books about go. Um, topic starters. If you had a transportation lawn, where would you go? So we're not just saying, where is go on their boards? We're, we're involving them in go, even things that parents can do. Where does this go? Where does this go? So feel free to use any of these. This is free. Uh, coreworkshop.org is free whether you're using it um, with a cough drop user or just somebody else. 
Um, yeah, Melissa just put it in there. So definitely use it, add your own ideas. Um, we're continuing to grow this. Okay. Yes. Um, the other thing that we did that we found really overwhelming and we hear this, the, the speech paths and the teachers and things is we just don't have time to, to model and, and things. So in a lot of your robust um, AAC apps, there's a find a button, make this your best friend. Uh, so, um, cause I wanna model with him, but I, I don't know where his, his words are. So if I wanna say, uh, you know, he's, he's pointing home, home. And I can say, oh, I want to go home and um, lead him through to it. Oh, you want to go home? I, I want, want to, to and go through the go, go bar home. home. Use this. Um, like I said, make this your best friend because this is where we see a lot of the parents and the, you know, the aides and the, the teachers and things say, I, you know, I know I'm supposed to model, but I just can't do it. Um, make sure, you know, even if you're not doing the full sentence, make sure you're hitting go and finding where that is. So um, hopefully that makes sense is don't make this overwhelming. Make sure that, you know, that was the biggest thing I thought when I first had started doing it with them is I have to hit the whole sentence every time. No, let's make sure we're hitting go and maybe one or two other words, but let's see him, let's make sure he's seeing it in different environments. Um, so, you know, the speech path is doing it there. Uh, you know, we talked about those 84 hours that, uh, that, um, an AAC learner would have to, to, to use just like the, the kiddo. Um, we can, we can make these 84 hours much easier instead of spacing it out over, or I mean, sorry, 84 years, instead of 84 years, um, we can, we can make that much better if the teacher is also doing it and the, the parents and the aides. So what we're trying to do is immerse them in AAC. Um, <clears throat> so, you know, we've assigned our, because I'm a bad parent, I forget to model with them. So sometime during the night, um, we try to model whatever Sarah sends home as the words of the week. And, um, Here's another thing that's really important when you're first starting out. If you can see here, he couldn't care less. But that's not what we're worried about when we're first working with him. We just want him to see us hitting the buttons and speaking with AAC. And then over time, as we work with him um, and the teacher works with him and things, that's where we, he started to pick up. But for a long time, he wasn't hitting buttons and he was, or he'd only hit the one the one food and it get really frustrating. And so you just have to remember, just model, model, model. Um, and, and as I mentioned, the immerse him in AAC, they have a, uh, a Chinese immersion program in, this, in our class where um, they don't just learn Chinese once a week. Um, they learn it not even once a day, but they're learning it all day. They're learning math in Chinese. They're learning um, social studies in Chinese. They are immersing them in AAC or in Chinese. That's what we need to do with the AAC learner. Instead of just having them learning it once a week when they're with the speech pathologist, we want to immerse them in AAC in different environments. So, um, hopefully that makes sense. I, I see a yes in there. That was me. <laughs> okay, so with that in mind, this was a speech pathologist dream. I had an iPad with cough drop on it for every student in my special needs class. When we did the word of the week lesson, we would have the entire class there with everyone on an iPad learning how to formulate sentences using the word of the week. The other kids loved being able to learn how Adam's device worked and it was a great modeling. It was great modeling for Adam. Plus it was a great way to work on sentence formulation with every student in the class. So the next slide, you can see Adam, um, we were able to put it up on the smart board and then Adam was able to model it for everyone else, all of his friends in his class and showing him them how to use it. What's cool about this is um, a lot of times the other AAC user or the, he's the only AAC 
user in the class. But a lot of times other kids in the class, it's a novel to them and they want to do it as well. So put it up there during your vocabulary lesson um, and let them play around with it. It also makes it less, uh, less unique for them and, and things are not taking away his device. Um, but we also created a poster that we put up on the wall that they could take down and walk around with and things. So once again, immersing them in AAC. Right, so this was the first day we had everyone on their own iPad and the kids were very quick to learn how it worked. We were talking about things that we like because the word of the week was like. Here they all made the sentence, I like to play sports. I modeled it on the smart board and then they each did it on their own device. There you go. Uh, I guess I didn't need to. Here you go. Whoops. So they all did it on their own. And then they got to make their own sentence about what they liked. Notice Adam is the only one not participating and seems to not even be paying attention. But that's okay. He's picking it up. He's learning it. He's hearing it. I like gorillas. I like to read books. <coughs> I like wolves. I like cats. Hey, you saw Adam on the floor, now you're listening to him. Yeah, I think it's lagging on ours a little bit, but. I like dolphins. Wait a second. So that was like the best day ever in my SLP life <laughs> when I got to do that. And um, we continue to do that with the kids in the class with the iPads. And if you go to the next slide, you can see that sometimes it looks like the only actual AAC user is not paying attention at all to the great modeling going on around him. There's my grad student up front teaching a wonderful word of the week lesson. Other students are using the same AAC as Adam to create sentences using the word of the week. And Adam has his back turned to everything. But when I sat on the floor next to him, he was able to create all of the sentences from the lesson. He was paying attention the whole time. He just has his preference of where he likes to sit. <laughs> And remember to be patient when you're modeling. It takes a lot of time sometimes, but when given enough wait time, it'll usually happen. And having reinforcements doesn't hurt either. So we're having a whole group lesson here, the word of the week lesson. Um, and we're making the sentence, he is swimming. So I do it on, my, she's done it on the smart board and then I'm doing it on my iPad right next to him. Swimming, he is swimming. And then he'll do it on his, eventually. Your turn. Love this one, what is he doing? He? He? My favorite part right there. He tries swimming. to grab her hand to do it. <laughs> he is swimming. He is swimming. Is. You know that is. Swim. And if you see when he presses the inflection button and then to add the ing, you'll Woo! press where the ing is before it even really pops up. So he has that motor memory down of that, which is so cool. Yeah. So when we have an idea of what the AAC user wants, we can model the correct way to ask for it. Um, Adam had a habit of pushing us out of the way and trying to run to the back room where there, where there was a couch when he wanted to take a break. Um, so instead of pushing us out of the way, we modeled for him, I am tired, I want couch on his device and had him on our device and then had him do it on his. And look at the smile on his face when he got what he wanted after communicating it appropriately. Yeah, that was another thing that we did at home too. Even when he's just hitting certain buttons, if he hit bathroom at the first time, we'd say, oh, do you want to go to the bathroom? Even if he didn't, we'd walk him towards the bathroom just so that he knew 
So as he's hitting certain buttons, they actually meant things. Um, so we we highly recommend that is to make sure that uh, you're you're acknowledging what they're they're hitting and things. Great. So where okay. We want to make sure to model the sentences in multiple ways. Um, this is a sentence building board I got from the Target Dollar Spot last year, which is was really cool. In this activity, he built the sentence on the sentence board first, then I modeled it on my device, then he produced it on his device, and then I decided to take it a step further and see if he would write it. He isn't much for writing, but as you can see, he did his name, and I helped him with I ride, and then he tried the rest on his own, which was great. So much great exposure to sentence formulation in one activity. Um, just another example of a way to work on expanding sentences. He made the sentence on the flipboard first, then heard me read it to him, and then saw and heard me produce the sentence on my device, and then produced the sentence on his device. Um, I picked these sentence flips up from Are we back? Well, not really. We're back. Oh, shoot. I know. We're just getting to the good stuff. <laughs> I know, man. So is it there when they're letting the next people in? It must be. Yeah. Well, yeah, I think as soon as the next session just opens up, it just kicks us out altogether. Well, yeah, I think as soon as the next Oh, you, guys, you, guys are, you guys are live again. Just ah, so you're here back. we are. Yes, sorry. We were saying bad oh, things. Quickly. Oh. All right. Uh, Let me share my screen again. All right. There you go. Can you see okay. that? Okay. We'll go quick. Here we had a sentence building puzzle. I can't remember where I got that one, sorry, but he built the sentence on the puzzle and then I modeled it and he did it on his device. Um, next, always make sure to make it fun. Um, I would bring in games and we would work on games and increasing his um, mean length of utterance. So we'd work on, I wanna flip the big pink fish or we could work on commenting, which we really want him to do more of. So that was cool. I missed or I did it. That's a fun way to work on that. Um, on this particular day, I was having a really hard time getting Adam to participate in anything. So I decided to pull out my book about poop because what teenager doesn't think poop is funny. He was all about making sentences about where the poop was on each page. This book is called Oh No Poo Poo by Jenny Bjorum. She's an SLP that works, um, focuses on apraxia. So it's actually to work on um, apraxia, but come on, it's funny. So we had a great time making sentences about poop and he was really into it. <laughs> um, we wanna make sure to model everywhere, not just in the classroom. I was able to put cough drop on my phone during a field trip. So here we are at the movies. I'm um, modeling for him on my phone. You can see him looking there. And then he was able to do it on his device. Um, this is a shameless way to show our cute um, classroom teacher costumes, but really I can't talk about Adam's journey without showing you the rest of his team. These are the Paris speeches and teacher that worked with Adam at TH Bell and they really do care a lot about him and his communication. See what we did there? So I have to give a shout out to Debbie Nordforce, the teacher in the grumpy Care Bear costume. She and I have worked together for nine years and um, we're like a well-oiled machine when it comes to working together on communication with her students. So having a great team makes all the difference. And um, we're now moving to teletherapy, whether that's, uh, oh, whether that was, um, just temporary or whether we're gonna be doing that in the next year. Uh, we have to start to learn different ways that we can do the same things over teletherapy. Um, so we even had it so that they would get in over Zoom and we'd still try to put, put him, uh, immerse him in AAC even there. It worked well the first day. After that, he got really sick of it, but-, uh, but We it, were sick it, of it too. It well. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, 
you can also share your screen and there's some other, there's some really great other conferences or sessions that you need to see about sharing your screen and things. But we would share our screens and, and shoot, do the um, find a pathway to, to where things were and have him follow along on his own device at home. Um, so you can continue to do that as well. Um, oh, let me back up. So one of the things that we noticed, well, there's a few things that we noticed is we continue to do this at the beginning. We didn't know if it was working. We just knew he was hitting buttons over and over again. And, um, you know, and that he was really good at getting really good at hitting his food. But we didn't know exactly the full, you know, what it was doing as far as expanding his vocabulary and why we should give him a full core. But uh, here's, some of the, here's some of the payoffs that started to come. And what you actually notice, and I hear this with a lot of autistic kids, is they, they don't learn just one button at a time, but all of a sudden um, you'll be working with them and working with them and then like, they'll know like 20 different buttons, what they mean. Um, and that's what we started to see in Adam. And so we gave him this full vocabulary, but uh, with, with just a few choice boards, he would not have been able to ask for gingerbread cookies. You know, we had core and he asked us for a cookie bread Christmas tree. We had to hurry and think about that. And we're like, every year we, we make gingerbread cookies to put on the, the Christmas tree because we can only have things that can be breakable on our Christmas tree. So he asked us, when are we gonna make the gingerbread cookies for the, the Christmas tree? But he did it with the core words that were already in there. Cookie Which bread, is so Christmas cool, tree. we never modeled that for him. He figured that out on his own and this is like major payoff. Yeah. Um, the other thing is, you know, we, we knew he liked McDonald's and we knew he liked Wendy's, but we're like, where should we go eat? And we did not, um, he, he hit orange restaurant pancake. You know, we did not have village Inn restaurant in his vocabulary, but he knew that their logo was orange and that they had pancakes. So he this was, was my favorite to one. It, like, it totally made my speechy heart like explode in happiness. This was yeah, like, this is, this is our major payoff is when he's able to use these words, half of which we haven't even used in our words of the week yet. But he's saying, I want to go to the orange restaurant pancake place. Um, we were at a park and, and he was really mad and we didn't know why. It's because he wanted to go to the wet shorts park, basically a park with a splash pad. Um, but we, once again, we did not have splash pad in his, um, in his board, but we do now. So, and you know what they did? They went from the park they were at to a park with a splash pad to show him again how powerful that communication is. So when you're working with a family like that is this cool and a team that's this cool, that is why Adam has made such great progress these past three years because he knows now that communication is powerful. Yeah. Um, we even had to like, I had to run to all a dollar and find a towel and things. And, but but if you can at all, you know, sometimes you can't do what they're asking for, but still acknowledge it. Um, this is one of my favorite ones. He's like, he keeps pointing outside and we're like, I don't know what pointing outside means. You know, did you want to go somewhere? And so he finally gets his iPad and he's like, Christmas. And he looks at us, well, I don't know. And he gets Christmas outside, bright, covered garage. He's asking, when are we putting up the outdoor Christmas lights? So these are the things that we want to give them. Um, core vocabulary is not, it's not mostly noun. Uh, um, it's mostly like bright and up, down, things like that, outside. Um, Christmas outline, I mean, that's, that was awesome right there. Is he was able to tell us what he wanted, even though he didn't have outdoor Christmas lights in there. Um, and for all you speech paths out there, we are, we are working on asking questions and we've been modeling a lot of questions, the WH words and all of that. And it'll come, it'll come eventually, but this is huge. Yeah, like I said, we, we spent many years not doing these things, so we feel we're behind. So take it from us, start from core immediately. Uh, but uh, this was the very first time right here that we actually knew that, that he was getting it because we were just so frustrated. We're modeling, modeling him, and he'd hit one button, but he didn't ever put more than one buttons together. 
but uh, basically we, we go swimming every Saturday and one day we show up and he gets really mad and we're like, you love swimming. What's going on? Are you sick? Let's go home. So um, we decided, we turned the car around, we started going home and then he's like freaking out even more. And, and we're just like, what in the world? All right, let's go back. So we go back and, and he wouldn't get out of the car and he got even more frustrated. And then he grabs my wife's um, phone and he pulls up the, the cough drop app and he hits swim, swing, play. And these aren't even words that we've worked on him with yet. He just babbled. And, and we're like, what is swim, swing, play? What, what in the world does swim, swing, play that mean? And my daughter said, well, maybe you want the splash pad. You can tell he really likes splash pad. Um, we're like, uh, maybe. And so we hurried and Googled the splash pad and just showed him a picture. And we said, is this what you want? And, and the look in his face when he realized that, that we understood him was worth all of this because he just like, he just sat back in his seat and was all excited and just a breath of um, breath of fresh air. And he's like, okay, let's go to the splash pad. And so we had to hurry and Google whether, where a splash pad was because we didn't even know. And we hurried and drove to it. And as soon as we got there, and he just runs out of the car and, and goes straight to the splash pad. And it was the best day ever for us because we understood or we knew that he was understanding these other these other words that we weren't even using yet. He was able to tell us that he wanted a splash pad. So. Um, right, we have a question. Um, first of all, someone said speech nerds are so excited. Yes. And, and then Rachel said, now she wants to be a speechy, which is great. You should do that. It's the best job ever. And someone asked, will he have a new SLP in teachers in middle or high school? So he has been in junior high. That's where I've been working with him for the past three years. And this year he's moving to high school. So he is moving to a brand new team. And I can't really talk about it because I'll cry. But um, I, I'm i sure that his progress will just keep going. Yeah, um, it's, it's going to be tough for us where I'm already teaching that whole new team how to, how to do it. And I It'll end up well, but every time we move to a new school, we're like, oh, no. Um, but, but hopefully, you know, like I said, this is just our personal experience, but hopefully you can take a lot of what we learn um, and, and share this with people that are just getting into the AAC journey as far as model, model, model. Don't worry if they're getting it at first. Give them a full vocabulary build a very strong team around the communicator and make sure that he is being immersed in AAC and be patient. Um, that was another frustrating thing is I joined all of these uh, AAC groups and people were like, my kid just started on it and he knows you know, 50 words and everybody's like, great, and that is great. But that's not always the case. A lot of times you have to work and work, so don't give up. Um, so. Right. So, so like so one minute for um, questions, but I don't know if anybody has any specific questions. Yeah. We can answer them once we Just go remember, on. I want to do my summary. Remember not to limit the AAC user by what you think they can do and let them show you what they can do by providing them with a robust vocabulary to use at their own pace. Think about beyond the now. Yeah. So we appreciate uh, everyone's time. I got to remember how to how to stop recording on this, but uh, thanks and, and